Hi everyone. With this episode of the SSC Online Weekly Rewind, we complete 50 episodes of the series, and it has been an immense pleasure for us to bring you the most interesting legal stories every week. And we wish to continue doing the same in the future. So stay tuned to our channel. Now let's begin with our today's episode, wherein I will give you an insight on the order that raised uproar in the state of Karnataka with respect to hijab ban, to a sexual harassment complaint from an employee in Skupu against the CEO of the company and his wife. Our top story of the week is from Karnataka High Court. On 10th February 2022, the Karnataka High Court, while noting the endless agitation and closure of educational institutions indefinitely, temporarily restrained all the students, regardless of their religion or faith, from wearing saffron shawls, scarves, hijab, religious flags, or the like within the classroom until further orders. The background to this decision. were petitions filed challenging the insistence of certain educational institutions that no girl students shall wear the hijab while in the classrooms it was specifically stated in the order that the said direction will be confined to such institutions wherein the college development committees have prescribed the student dress code slash uniform remarking that whether wearing of hijab in the classroom is a part of essential religious practice of islam in the constitutional guarantees needs a deeper examination the karnataka high court is continuing to hear the submissions in the case and 6 days on the said proceedings have passed we will update you with the decision in the matter as and when the court concludes and pronounces it Let's start with the Supreme Court updates. In a dowry demand and harassment case where a woman had lodged a criminal complaint against her husband and in-laws but no specific role was attributed to the in-laws, the Supreme Court has held that it would be unjust if the in-laws are forced to go through the tribulations of a trial and that general and omnibus allegations cannot manifest in a situation where the relatives of the complainant's husband are forced to undergo trial the court observed that a criminal trial leading to an eventual acquittal also inflicts severe scars upon the accused and such an exercise must therefore be discouraged the division bench of the supreme court has held that an insurance company cannot repudiate a claim merely on the ground that there was a delay in intimating it about the occurrence of the theft of vehicle the court was deciding a case relating to theft of a truck that was insured with oriental insurance company limited during the pendency of the complaint before the district forum the insurance company repudiated the claim of the complainant wide its letter stating that There was a breach of a condition of the policy which mandated immediate notice to the insurer of the accidental loss or damage and that the complainant had intimated about the loss after the lapse of more than 5 months and therefore the insurance company had disowned their liability on the claim of the complainant while the district forum allowed the complaint the NCDRC reversed the said finding when the matter reached before the supreme court it observed that of course it is true that there was a delay of about 5 months in the part of the complainant in informing and lodging its claim before the insurance company nonetheless it is pertinent to note that the insurance company has not repudiated the claim on the ground that it was not genuine it has repudiated only on the ground of delay the court hence set aside the order of ncdrc addressing the issue of obviating difficulties to victims of trafficking with respect to traveling long distances for giving evidence in trial courts the supreme court extended the recording of evidence of child victims or witnesses of human trafficking via video conferencing the court was of the opinion that the video conference procedure need not be restricted 
only to the period affected by COVID-19 pandemic. Let's move on to the High Court updates. Stating that the manner in which court records tampered were insidious and revealed a well-planned and methodical attempt to subvert the justice system in order to escape conviction in the Upahar case, Delhi High Court held that since the matter relates to tampering of judicial record, the same has to be decided expeditiously in order to ensure faith of the public in the judicial system. Genesis of the entire proceedings stemmed from the devastating fire that occurred in the Upahar cinema, which resulted in the death of 59 people and caused injuries to more than 100 people. In this case, tampering of judicial records was noted, in view of which the sentence of Ansel Brothers was not suspended. To read the report from the facts to the detailed decision, check out the SEC online blog. Can a teacher be criminally prosecuted for enforcing reasonable force on a student in order to maintain discipline? Kerala High Court, while explaining that inflicting corporal punishment on a child by a parent or a teacher is forbidden, also observed that hurt of a less serious crime is not forbidden when inflicted in the reasonable chastisement of a child by a parent or by a school teacher. on to a case from the District Court of Delhi. A District Court in Delhi addressed a case wherein the CEO of Scoopwoop, a digital media company, was alleged of sexual harassment by one of the employees of the company sought injunction in order to stop the employee from posting content with respect to the said complaint of sexual harassment. The court, while denying injunction, expressed that expression of a victim's trauma or experience is his or her fundamental right which can only be curtailed if it falls under four broad categories that is libel, slander, defamation, contempt of court, offense against decency or morality and undermines the security or tends to overthrow the state. Let's see some of the legislation updates. SEBI has issued standard operating guidelines for the world managers and depositories, electronic gold receipts segment in order to ensure ease of compliance for the market participants in the EGR ecosystem, as well as effective implementation of the regulation standard operating guidelines under regulation 28 of SEBI world managers regulations 2021. On February 15, 2022, the Ministry of Road Transport and Highways has issued Central Motor Vehicles Second Amendment Rules 2022 in order to prescribe norms related to safety measures for children below 4 years of age riding or being carried on a motorcycle. Further, it specifies use of a safety harness and crash helmet. It also restricts speed of such motorcycles to 40 km per hour. These rules will come into force after one year from the date of publication of the Central Motor Vehicle Second Amendment Rules 2022. The government approved a new scheme, New India Literacy Programme, Nav Bharat Sakshirta Karikram, for the period FYS. 2022 to 2027 to cover all the aspects of adult education to align with national education policy 2020 and budget announcements 2021-2022. The national education policy 2020 has recommendations for adult education and lifelong learning. The objective of the scheme is to impart not only foundational literacy and numeracy, but also to cover other components which are necessary for a citizen of 21st century, such as critical life skills, vocational skills, development and continuing education. In this week's SSE Online Quiz, we had asked, 
how many international codes are covered on SEC online web edition? And the correct answer is 29. But unfortunately, we have received no correct answers for this week's quiz. Thank you everyone for watching this episode. This is Devika Sharma signing off for this week.